Hey guys, welcome to my channel where we'll be discussing family, faith, hope, and love. I'm so glad that you joined me. Let's be fed daily bread. Are you hungry? Welcome. Welcome to my channel. I hope that this message finds you doing well. If this is your very first time tuning in, you have joined me on my digital journey. I have been led by the Holy Spirit to drop golden nuggets each and every day. Today is actually day 227, episode 227. Hello to my family and friends. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your words of encouragement. Thank you for joining me on this digital journey. The word for today is surplus. Yes, surplus. When the Holy Spirit gave me my list of words, and like I said, he is so meticulous. He knows which day and when I suppose to be talking uh, about each particular topic. So when I got up this morning, I was like, well, Holy Spirit, what is it that you want me to talk to you to my platform about today? And I went through my journal and there was the word surplus. So I was like, okay, um, I hope you had an opportunity to tune in and look at my previous episodes. Um, I know yesterday I was talking about nuisance. Um, check that one out. And prior to that was return on your investment. So I've got a lot of information, a lot of golden nuggets that I have been dropping along the way. And I know that they will be beneficial to you in your everyday living. Remember, the word of God is, comes by hearing. Faith comes by hearing. And not only be hearing the word, but we're also supposed to be doers of the word as well. So let's go right into surplus. What does the word surplus mean? so we can get the definition so we can see exactly where holy spirit is taking us surplus is an amount of something that is left over i think leftover is the key word um, another word another definition is for surplus is an excess of production or supply so you've got an amount of something that is left over or an excess of production or supply so with the Holy Spirit giving you the word surplus in reference to looking at it in a different way, your perspective, um, he is talking in reference to what God can do and his ability. Um, God is the one that gives us everything that we have. We may go out and we may have jobs and we may have businesses um, or whatever line of work that you do. And yes, you may be able to come into whatever it is that you have, but at the end of the day, God is the one that provides you with everything. So you also have to have a mentality as well in whatever it is that you want to have. Scripture tells us whatever a man thinketh, so is he. If you have a poor man's mentality, you're going to be operating in a poor man realm. If you have a rich man's mentality, like a surplus mentality, you will be operating in that realm, okay? It says, and you need to know from the very beginning, there is no scarcity in the kingdom. If you're part of God's kingdom, the kingdom of heaven, there is no scarcity. There's no lack. Everything is of abundance. And scripture tells us that we need to live on earth as it is in heaven. So in heaven, if there's no lack, there's no scarcity, why is it here on earth that people feel that they have to live broke, busted, and disgusted? I had a conversation with a friend of mine um, the other day, and the first question I asked her, I said, you work extremely hard, don't you? And she was like, yes. And I said, I know that you do. Won't you want to be compensated for the work that you do? Why is it here they want to tell you how much it is that you're supposed to be making? They give you a set dollar amount, $10. I know people have been working for 20 something years and they still make it. They don't even make $15 an hour. 
They make $10 an hour, $12 an hour, $13 an hour. Why? Because of the mentality that is put into your head from the worldly system that whatever it is that they give you is suffice. Whereas God is telling you that there's no lack, there's no scarcity. Only God has the ability. It tells us in Deuteronomy 8, 18, that God has the ability to give you wealth. But he tells you, seek ye first the kingdom of God. And everything that you want, everything that you want will be added on to you after. God first, family second, and business third. So let's go ahead and see which scripture God wanted to talk to you today about in reference to surplus. And that scripture, it comes from the book of, I had it right here. It comes from the book of Deuteronomy, okay? And it's Deuteronomy 2, 7. And it's talking about us having everything that we need. For the Lord your God has blessed you in everything you have done. He has watched your every step through your great wilderness. And during these 40 years, the Lord your God has been with you and you have lacked nothing. We know that um, when you read the Bible, you hear people go through um, the wilderness for 40 years and you'd be like, oh my God, how did they do that? But once you have the covering, you have the protection of God, you don't have to worry about anything, okay? There's another scripture that I wanted to bring to your attention about surplus, and it's in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 11. And it says, and the Lord shall supply, and the Lord shall make you have a surplus of prosperity through the fruit of your body, of your livestock, and of your ground in the land which the land swore, which the Lord swore to your fathers to give you. If the word of God is true, which it is, because scripture tells us the word of God proves true, okay? Up to now, man can't prove that the word of God is incorrect, okay? The word of God proves true. And if God says so, it is so. Deuteronomy 1, 8 through 9 tells you to meditate on God's word day and night. And it's only then, only then will you be prosperous, okay? And when you have a surplus, think about it. This life that we're living is not about us. It's about doing what God wants us to do. It's called kingdom business, sisters and brothers. It's not called selfless working, just me, nickel and diming, working, spending. It's about other people and doing what God wants you to do for the kingdom. When we have something, it's for somebody else. It's never for us. It's for us to be a blessing to others, okay? But what everybody does is make it about themselves. And a lot of people choose grinding over grace when God has the ability to give you wealth. If scripture tells you, seek ye first the kingdom of God, and then everything will be added unto you, then by all means, seek ye first the kingdom of God, and everything else will be added unto you. And if God said he's going to give you a surplus, trust and believe that God said he will give you a surplus. God is not a person to lie, okay? Whatever he says, his word will never come back to you void. So you need to take the initiative, take every step necessary to follow God, trust God, trust in his word, build your faith because faith is a muscle that needs to be built. If you don't exercise your muscles, they become weak, they become limp, okay? You've got to stay connected to the source. When you're not connected to God, you lose touch of um, sight, you conform to the world, and what the world tells you is what you believe. But when you stay connected to God, you have that intimate relationship with the Most High. You're filled with the Holy Spirit. You have someone that is leading you, not someone that is driving you. The enemy drives you to do all kind of bad stuff, but the Holy Spirit leads you and guides you in spirit and in truth. And then you won't have nothing to fear. No matter what the enemy throws at you, you know exactly that God will supply all your very needs. So my question to you each and every day, is are you hungry i know that i am so let's be fed daily bread Ooh.